For more on all of this, we are joined by the Wolf of Wall Street himself, Jordan Belfort. Thank you so much for coming on. I just want to start, first off, do you buy Robin Hood's excuse for stopping GameStop and AMC buys today? I actually do. Yeah. Um, so here's the, the truth is, and I, I love Dave Portnoy, by the way, yeah. um, and this is Case. He's right and he's wrong. And everything he says, Wall Street's out to screw the little guy. They have to then bail out Wall Street. But in this particular case, Robinhood is in a terrible, terrible position because what happens is they are a broker. They're booking all these trades. At the end of the day, when this thing collapses, and it will, it definitely will, okay? At some point, GameStop will come back down to earth in a massive way, and it's going to be like catching a falling knife. And what happens is the brokerage firm that's booking all these trades, they're going to be liable for losses in people's accounts if they blow through their margin requirements, and they could literally lose $10 billion in a single day. That, that's, I wow. think, what's going on more than anything else. Now, that being said, they could also be, be getting pressured by, he, as he said, other yeah. clearing brokers are pressuring him. So, yeah, he's getting pressure from clearing brokers. But again, just for self-preservation's sake, okay, if I was that guy, I, would, I wouldn't have shut it down. I would have increased margin dramatically and made it more expensive for people to trade. He probably made the wrong decision by just shutting something down because mm. he could have accomplished it without pissing off so many people. <laughs> but, I, but Dave's right. They're always screwing the little guy. Yeah, he's right about that. Okay, that's fair. So do you think Robin Hood will change anything tomorrow? Do they bend to this pressure or do they just stay where they are? Um, oh, I think they'll have to bend because okay. what's going to happen is they're now they're, they're in a no-win situation. Right. What they're going to do, my guess, is they will probably uh, allow some trading. They'll make it more expensive, meaning you have to put up more collateral to trade, and they'll try to limit the slow the flow like that. But I don't think at this point that you're protecting hedge funds. That that they've been destroyed already. Like right now, that money's rolled over once people are back short at a much higher price. Level. So I don't think it's really about they're doing things because they're getting pressure from hedge funds that lost money. Yeah. Those hedge funds got decimated already. Yeah. That damage has been done. They're pretty much dead and on the floor. You get, you're going to short this thing? I mean, would you do it? It's at, you know, I mean, it's up in after hours. It's really high. I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people are thinking, we got to short this thing now. It's going to come down. I would... I have good friends who are the biggest short sellers in the world. I would never do that. I hate being a short seller because you're betting against on everyone else's misery. You know, I would not like right. to be the guy who smiles when every small investor is getting destroyed. I wouldn't do it. There's a lot of money to be made on the short side for sure at a certain point, but I'd rather be on the long side on the way up because you're just, you're making money on everyone else's pain. It's a, it's a miserable, you know, existence and you want to be in the shadows if you're doing it. So that's not for me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. A lot of people got really mad at Citadel and Steve Cohen, who's the Mets owner today. And I want to ask you why. What did they allegedly do in this thing? So what they're what they're saying is here, and, I, and again, you know, you don't know exactly what's happening, yeah. but that they took losses. They were they were they bailed out one of the larger hedge funds that lost apparently billions of dollars in this, and they're accusing uh, them of essentially pressuring and forcing this ban on not only in in um, from Robin, but also other platforms. I believe stopped the trading, you know, eliminated people's ability to buy. So they're holding them responsible. And they, listen, they might very well be doing that. I just. Don't think that's why he, Robin Hood closed down trading. I understand if I was that guy, you'd be like, oh, my God, I'm going to be out of business when this right. thing is all over. Seriously. Yeah. Like, I don't think people get that. So the guy deserves a little bit of a break. He really does. Yeah, no, I, I, th I think Robin Hood's getting they're getting a lot of heat right now. And I, I wasn't sure whether or not they deserved it myself because you're watching all this and you're like, this poor guy's going to jump off it. the building. I mean, this is scary stuff. It's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it absolutely is. You know, my friend today said, that, you know, there's this narrative right now that it's just the little guys versus the hedge funds and all this. But he said the reality is, is that there's a, a lot of Wall Street that joined up with the little guys saying this is a cool move. Let's try this. And they're the reason this thing got pushed so big and these hedge funds are so down that it's really a lot of Wall Street that's making a ton of money off of this. Is that true? I think it's Wall Street and Main Street. Both making money, right. and remember what you know. What happens with these stocks? The reason they target stocks like GameStop that have what's called a very high short interest. People have shorted the stock because they believe the fundamentals are crappy, and it's going to basically either go close to zero or to zero. Exactly. So when you do that, you create a situation where you're forced to have to eventually buy it back. 
So there's this dynamic, a rubber band effect. If the stock, stock starts to rise past a certain point, it becomes very expensive. The hedge funds have to put more collateral up to maintain their position. Yeah. And eventually, if it goes up too much like it did in GameStop, they don't have the collateral. And they have to just basically close out, and they end up suffering massive losses. Now, yeah. just so you know, okay. imagine if that happened and that hedge fund was clearing its business through Robinhood, and they lost more than they had. Robinhood would have to pay the loss. That's the problem if it gets even worse. So the, the, uh, the, the broker is in a very bad position here. Yeah, he really is. Yeah, that, that's a real pickle. I, I want to change it up and I want to widen this out. We, we've seen over the last, I don't know, what, 10, 12 years since 2008, really, there's a hatred towards Wall Street. Why do you think that is? It's justified. And that's where, you know, what Dave Port and I was saying today, I was laughing while he was ranting because he's right about all of that stuff. But just I think he was just off in terms of what, ha why Robin did what they did. But everything yeah. he said is true. Wall Street screws over the little guy routinely on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And then when they screw up big time, guess what? We're too big to fail. And the little guy bails them out. We've seen it happen again and again. And it's maddening. It's absolutely maddening. It really, really is that there has been no hell to pay for the people at the highest levels that allowed these things to happen. Okay. So I think the anger is justified. I think it's palpable, and I think it's going to continue on. And now there's a little bit of a, some way for people well, to yeah. get even, so to speak. You know. Yeah. L let me ask you this, though. I mean, this is, this is not going to be a nice question, but a lot of people say that you are the embodiment of that. What do you say to that? Well, I mean, and, and back in the day, yeah, well, this was you're, more like, you're, you're, everybody was, knows was, your story, yeah. But I was actually on the doing what the Robin Hood people are doing. In other words, what, what was okay. so f ironic when I watched this happening is that this is really like a modified pump and dump scheme where everybody, the first thing you said when you were starting your show is all these people banded together and got this. That's illegal. Just so you know, you can't band together and right. collude it's together like... to drive up the price of a stock and 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 hurt short sales. As as much as you hate short sales, and I don't like them very much either, it's illegal to collude together. Now, yeah. obviously, it's a very tough thing to prove, and I, I don't believe the SEC are cracking down like that, but— you know, the point is, is that's what I was doing. So, you know, in terms of the embodiment, I think I was the embodiment of greed more than anything else back in the day. Yeah. But, you know, this is a really when I looked at this, I was like, wow, what an interesting phenomenon that because of the power of the Internet, it just shows you yeah. that this ability for people to communicate, it levels the playing field. It really does. And it can really cause massive pain for the traditional financial structure where they think they they have the access to all the information and the monopoly on how sure. trading goes. And look what happens when it gets reversed. It can get very ugly very fast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I tell you what, I want to thank you for coming on. I've read your book. It's one of the best books I've ever read. You, Nobody has a better thank story you. than you in the world. And uh, I was very <laughs> excited to interview you. Absolutely. Jordan Belfort, The Wolf of Wall Street. Thank My you so pleasure. much for coming on the show. Thank, thank you, you, sir. All right. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.